Hello and welcome to the Recursion Cafe where we play games from the discard pile. In today's game of fun match, we have myself on the left playing Invisible Man and Sincida on the right playing Cloak and Dagger. Invisible Man is a solo hero with two move, 15 health and starts with three fog tokens in his zone. He can use these for plus one defense uh, when he plays a card on defense and uh, he can teleport between them. Cloak and Dagger are a dual hero, eight health each, two move, melee and they aim to deal at least two combat damage above the opponent's defense in order to trigger their abilities, which is a discard and an extra action if you're a dagger. So this is a really interesting matchup because we have the master of uh, defense, auto damage, and kind of moving around the scheming against dual heroes who aren't super mobile, but are really aggressive. They tend to be glass cannon kind of archetype fighters. Um, this is also the day where I learned that Invis Invisible Man does not start on a fog token. So uh, Sanzida is going to make, make full use of this by boosting in with Cloak immediately to start the attack. She uses a Living Shadow, which is a really good card in uh, Cloak and Dagger's arsenal. But if she's going all offense, then uh, maybe that's not the most useful card in her hand right now. And so Cloak, Cloak is going to attack. Uh, Invisible Man is not on a, cloud, a fog space, so he does not have the bonus is a Channel of the Dark into a Coded Note. I get to filter the top three cards in my deck, while Sincida gets to put me next to Dagger. Probably not on a Fog Token, because that would... <laughs> no need to if you don't have to. Um, it's worth noting here that I look at the top three cards in my deck, two of them are attack cards and one is a Scheme. So I have not met much defense coming up in the next couple of turns. Here is a uh, Commanding Impact into a Confound. That is two damage through, which triggers Dagger's ability of an extra action. Sincida is allowed to discard a card if she wants. Uh, she's running out of them soon. Um, unless, if she doesn't, I get to move the Fog Tokens, but she will discard a Chosen Fate. Apparently, uh, healing is not on the game for, uh, on, on the cards for Sincida this game. So discards a Chosen Fate, draws a card from Commanding Impact, and has another action. Well, she continue to combo in. It is a point where Invisible Man is vulnerable, he's not on any fog, but she decides to maneuver and step on my fog tokens so that I am not able to uh, get extra defense. A lot has happened already and I haven't even taken a turn yet. So here's my first maneuver. I'll draw the second of the three cards that I saw and it's still not looking good for defense. Here's a slip away. Um, so since either defends fully and manages to swap both are fighters, but I get to move to a space with a fog, well, I get to move a fog token and then appear on it, which is even better, allowing me to put a little bit of distance away from um, Sinzida and also steal the fog token from underneath Dagger so that she's not blocking it anymore. So I'm feeling a little bit better uh, um, being on a fog token. However, I am aware that I don't, I might only have one or zero defense cards left in my hand right now. Um, and I'm trying to poker face that out against Sinzida who's playing a very aggressive set of heroes. Fortunately, she double maneuvers, so I'm feeling all right about that. So I also double maneuver, and I think this is where I've started drawing through into some versatile. So Cloak runs in and uh, tries to attack. I'm on a fog token, I'm feeling okay about this. Uh, there it is, uh, there is the undefended attack, uh, which triggers Cloak's ability, so I have to discard two cards. At this point, it is quite telling that I don't have any defense cards. Um, which is not ideal. So I, I'm down to nine health already. I discard a Rolling Fog and a Slip Away. Those apparently were the best options at the time. So at this point, uh, I'm glad Sinzida went in with Cloak because if that was Dagger, I think the game would have been over uh, a couple of more attacks, to be honest. But uh, as such is life, uh, Sinzida puts Invisible Man into the middle of the map away from Fog Tokens, but I'm able to maneuver back to one. And here we go, so Cloak comes in again. It's curious that it's always Cloak, but I suppose Dagger is covering the left side of the map just in case. It's the attack, it is into the void, into a Dreaming of Revenge. There's a four value in Dreaming of Revenge, uh, so boosting it is gonna be pretty difficult. It also means that because I'm on a Fog Token and Dagger is also on a Fog Token, she takes one damage, which is reasonably fortunate. I was wrong, uh, since it does boost it with Lightforce Barrage, so it hits for one damage over my four defense. Just trying to push damage through wherever she can. Uh, I'm already down to half health as a visible man, so it's not, not looking ideal. I do have a swing back at Cloak, um, just to try and put some pressure back on Sinzida. 
it's a fake. Uh, it's an emerge from mist, so it would have been a five, kind of like a Merta shift, but instead it's only one damage through. Uh, it was a good call from some Zeta there. Both of our fighters are still looking very healthy. I suppose it's quite telling if I'm starting on a fog token what card is coming. But here's a wrong fog. I shift away. Uh, I shift the fog away and move over so, so as to block Dagger's entry, or at least make it a little bit harder uh, to get in close because. Ultimately, between the two, she is generally the more dangerous. She has the higher attack cards, as well as the more powerful ability to just keep comboing into you. Cloak moves away. So at the moment, I'm, I'm happy to, to uh, oblige, and I just double draw, and I'm, I'm all right to just sit there. Uh, if Sanzida wants to close, she can. It is only four spaces away from uh, Dagger to move in. It looks like Sanzida has decided to be a bit more conservative draw up to get more attack and defense options here and try to cover more of the board. I maneuver and I'll play Vanish. I waited, I believe, until Sanzida had seven cards in hand and then decide to Vanish. So I recover a health and disappear off the board. It's one of uh, Invisible Man's more unique cards. And so I won't appear until the start of my next turn, forcing Sanzida to double maneuver because uh, she doesn't have any passes in her deck, uh, discarding a couple of cards and then I will come back. Stepping back into my corner. Since Zeta didn't move or didn't step on any fogs, and that's fine by me, I will vanish again. I think I had both of those in my hand by turn two, uh, and I was just waiting for the right time. So that's another heal for me, and another two cards that Since has to burn through from her deck. So if played right, vanish can really give you solid card advantage going into exhaustion. But I've run out of vanishes, so I have to, <laughs> have to uh, come in and at least be present on the board and perhaps engage uh, at this point. So we both know that and it's now just, uh, well, the waiting game is over, here comes the combat. So I appear next to Dagger, who is traditionally, as I said earlier, the, uh, the bigger threat, but she has some nice defense cards. So it is a slip away into an into darkness, uh, which is funny. So I get to move a fog token to a space without a fighter, then place an invisible man on that space, and then into darkness triggers, and uh, since he is able to move one of us up to three spaces. At this point in the game, it's hard to tell who has the lead. I've definitely taken more damage as Invisible Man, but Cloak and Dagger have burned through a lot of their cards already. They're still looking healthy HP-wise, but it's anyone's game right now, and I think it can go either way, to be honest. Slip Away seems quite a, uh, it kind of plays into Invisible Man's theme in how he plays, uh, he likes to hit and run. Zeta double maneuvering there and then just ditching a channel of the dark. Waiting for her time to strike. It looks like I'll take the initiative and move in. It is a surprise attack into a living shadow. The surprise attack will cancel uh, Dagger's defense card and put three damage into her. I knew there was one more left in the deck and it's such a powerful card that having drawn through most of uh, her decks and Zeta would have, would have seen it at this point. I. That does mean I'm not on a fog token, and now I'm surrounded, well, flanked by uh, both fighters, which means there is a card that becomes a six when they're next to each other. I am acutely aware of this, and uh, I've been saving up a certain defense card to play in Possibility, but Sanzida reads this and plays Channel of the Dark, which just gains an action instead. So she very cleverly played around Impossible to See, uh, which, was, which was awesome. So now it's another attack. And I have to imagine this is the six. Do I play another impossible to see? Do I have one in hand? I am not convinced I do. So now I have to consider what happens if she keeps comboing. So here is the six perfect balance. That's it. That's the name. Uh, into a covert preparation. So that's four damage through. Ouch. I do get to draw a card and move a fog token, which means I am a little bit better set up for the next turn. Um, but that still hurt, that <laughs> still hurt a lot. And I believe that was from Dagger, so that's another action incoming. I'm feeling a bit more confident with the Fog Token, but, and because I've drawn a card and a lot of, uh, a lot of Invisible Man's cards are defensive or versatile, so I should be all right there. Cloak and Dagger move away. Invisible Man maneuvers. And it looks like Cloak and Dagger's Zeth is getting pretty thin, which might be something I try to play to. Uh, especially since Cloak and Dagger have the health advantage right now. I decided not to move, just to stay on the Fog Token, and Cloak and Dagger return to flank again. 
So if this is a six, I need at least a four nature defense. It is not, it is the seven. I realized there was one left in the deck. Um, and so I play a card that will allow me perfectly to reflect damage back to kill Dagger. It means I take four damage, which isn't ideal, I'm down to two. Um, but that's one fighter out of the game. So then I draw a card and choose the effect to move Invisible Man away. And Cloak can do this. There's the Reign of Terror, that's a card I haven't seen the whole game until at this point, I believe. So Invisible Man uh, using one of his schemes to deal auto damage just across the map from wherever, as long as he's on a fog token. Here is a boost, which is a shame. The Living Light is a really good card, uh, but not so useful when you're down a fighter on Cloak and Dagger side. So here's a reconsideration of an attack, and I'm on a fog, so Invisible Man shouldn't be feeling too bad about that. And there's a Dark Horse Dimension into an into thin air. So that is a four to five. Uh, the defense is solid, however, um, Invisible Man starts to discard a card, which, which is a shame. The opponent then gets to move uh, a fog token up to three spaces, which is less than ideal, but you can't really complain. A five defense is uh, it's pretty potent, to be honest. There we go. So the fog moved through the, uh, through the secret patch with that. So I discard a Kovac Preparation and we'll just dance around and find our way back to the Fog. So at this point, Cloak doesn't have the highest values of attack and also that deck only has uh, mostly boosts of two and a couple of three. So the highest uh, Cloak and Swing is more or less five. So as long as I keep my defense up, um, there we go, commanding packs, perfect example of the five. Um, as long as I keep that defense up, I should be feeling okay. So no damage goes through, and a token deck has to draw another card, which is looking uh, like less of an advantage at this point. Here's a step lightly, so that's three damage to someone adjacent to Invisible Man. So a cloak is down to two. There we go, if all token has to move. Cloak has one card in deck, so as long as Invisible Man is able to stay away, he should be okay. However, Invisible Man is also down to two, so it only takes one slip up, one attack to get through, and uh, that's game either way, so it's still pretty close. Doing the pro gamer move of looking through the discard pile just to check what is possible and what's not. And there is a maneuver for the last action. So Cloak walks up. Here is his last chance, because he will run out of health at the end of this game. Commanding impact, a 5 into a 5 defense. Uh, no damage goes through. Invisible Man can walk one space away. A Fog Token moves, but ultimately, yeah, Cloak has to maneuver and takes the exhaustion damage, and that is game. Really well played from Sanzida. Um, Cloak and Dagger, they're kind of forced to be hyper hyper aggressive. Uh, they kind of moved in like the Raptors right at the start of the game. But I think that's correct because if you let Invisible Man stand on a fog and just kind of uh, turtle up, then the Cloak and Dagger ability is a lot harder to fire. Thanks for watching everyone. If you want to support the channel, you can consider buying a coffee at uh, the website that's linked below. Cheers for watching. See you next time.